Okay, hello everybody. In this video, I'm going to show you how to simulate a sinusoidal source, create an RC filter, and plot the input voltage and output voltage, those sinusoids, of that RC filter. So first, let's create a schematic. Let's uh, put a voltage source on the schematic. So, insert a voltage source. Let's put a resistor on the schematic and a capacitor. Connect these together. Let's put a ground in the circuit. And I'm going to put a, uh, a terminal in the circuit just to emphasize that the output voltage is over here on the right. You can do that by inserting a wire and then wherever you want that wire to end kind of hanging off in space, you double click and the wire should appear there. You might have to hit escape to uh, stop the wire drawing. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a net name called Vout right there. Let's add another net name. Let's call it VIN on the left side of the resistor. Okay, so we're going to be comparing the output voltage versus the input voltage. The RC circuit, the RC filter, is actually the resistor and the capacitor here. This source is going to stimulate uh, that circuit, give it an input voltage, and we're going to look at the input voltage and the output voltage together on one plot. Okay, so let's make the source a uh, 10 volt source. But let's click on advance. It's going to be a 10 volt sinusoidal source. So I click on sinusoid. I'm going to have a zero offset and amplitude of 10 volts, a frequency of 1000 hertz. And so that's all I need there. Let's move this off to the side. That's the sinusoidal source voltage. Let's make the resistor 10K ohms. Let's make the capacitor 1,000 picofarads. And so this will result in a low-pass filter with a cutoff frequency of 16 kilohertz. Uh, you can work out that formula to figure out for an RC filter what the cutoff frequency will be. It'll be 16 kilohertz in this case. Next, let's set up the simulation uh, to be a, a transient analysis, but in reality we're just doing a time domain simulation. So I'm going to simulate this circuit for 5 milliseconds and that 5 milliseconds you might choose it just to be several cycles of your sinusoid. In this case I know 5 milliseconds will show me a few cycles of the sinusoid. And here's our simulation. So the plot comes up black at first because I haven't clicked on any voltage. Let's look at the input voltage. So the input voltage VIN, there it is. Uh, this sinusoid has a peak value of uh, 10 volts and it has a period of one millisecond which corresponds to a thousand hertz uh, sinusoid. And so now let's actually click on the output voltage also and see that. Uh, I hate that blue color so I'm going to change it to pink so I can see that better. Okay so what you see is that for a thousand hertz sinusoid that the input voltage in the green and the output voltage in the pink are really approximately the same. You do see a little bit of time shift and, and that's actually a phase shift. RC filters will do that uh, and, and you'll get to observe this as you simulate. So just to show what happens when you increase the frequency, uh, let's right click on this sinusoid sinusoidal source. Let's turn this uh, source, let's change the source to be 5 kilohertz. So instead of typing 5000, I'm going to type 5k here. Hit OK. Hit Run. And so uh, you can see lots of cycles here. I want to zoom in on those cycles. So I'm going to reduce the simulation time. I'm going to say simulate, edit simulation command. Reduce this down to one millisecond run it again so you'll see we're zoomed in there. You could start seeing how the output, the pink, is starting to shrink in voltage compared to the input voltage and that's what's going to happen with a low pass filter. Okay so so you can start seeing that here. Let's increase the input frequency even more. Let's go up to 16 kilohertz 
hit OK, hit Run. And so now you really can see it. You can see how the input voltage still peaks out at 10 volts and the output voltage has fallen. In fact, I can put cursors on uh, these voltages. Let me click on VN. Let me click on VN again to get a second cursor. And so I'm going to somewhere along VN, uh, click on or move the cursor over to that. You can see it's about 10 volts, 9.97 volts at that particular simulation point. Um, I'm going to click on uh, V out and that gives me the second cursor and I can anywhere along here on the pink trace. So you can see over in this window on the lower right, I have as the input 9.97 volts, about 10 volts, and the output uh, 7.02 volts, right, roughly 70%. And so that's the, that's the uh, if you look at the ratio, uh, 7 volts over 10 volts, you're roughly at the uh, half power point of this filter. And uh, and so that's uh, 1 over the square root of 2. That's about 70%. So you can tell right now at this 16 kilohertz frequency that we've reached the half power point of this filter. So if you square 70%, uh, you get 0.5. So that's where you get the half power from. So just to show what happens as you go even higher in frequency, uh, let's right click on that sinusoid. I'm going to change this to be 100 kilohertz and hit OK. And just to see uh, more, uh, to zoom in more into the simulation, I'm going to again click on the schematic, simulate, edit simulation command. Uh, I'm going to change this uh, down to 100 microseconds simulation time. Actually, yeah, 100 microseconds will work fine. So 100U, hit uh, simulate, and and so you could see now that even even more. In fact, let me let me drag a cursor on the output peak. Let me drag the other cursor over to the input peak, and you could see the input uh, is still about 9.97, 10 volts, and the output has fallen down to 1.6 volts. So a significant attenuation of the input signal is happening here. So as the input signal increases in frequency, uh, the output signal is falling in amplitude, and that's what you would expect from a low-pass filter. This filter is passing low frequencies, and it's blocking or attenuating high frequencies. So let's increase the uh, input even further in frequency. Let's go up to 1 megahertz. So in, in LT Spice, you can't just type 1M, that will be 1 millihertz. You have to type MEG, that's 1 megahertz. Let's keep the amplitude the same. Okay, let's run this simulation. And, and let's zoom in even more. Let's zoom into, let's see, let's change the uh, simulation command to only simulate 10 microseconds. So hit OK, simulate. Now we've zoomed in. And you can see really how 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 far, how much attenuated the output is, that, that pink value there. So the input, if I use my cursors, again, is still about 10 volts, and the output's only about uh, 260 millivolts. Okay, so it's, it's yet another example. Increase frequency of the input signal, and the output signal falls in amplitude. Okay, so that's an example of creating a sinusoidal source and viewing sinusoidal signals in LT spice. And so before we wrap up here, let me show you what is sometimes a problem in LT spice. Sometimes, not all the time, when you click, uh, right click on this dot tran 10u, this is saying, uh, this is telling LT spice to do a transient simulation of 10 microseconds in duration. If I right click on that, it actually brings up the edit simulation command. Sometimes, not all the time, uh, when you change values in, in this window and you hit OK, it may not change the actual command in LT Spice. I have had it always work that if you click on Simulate Edit Sim Simulation Command, which brings up the same window, uh, th this always seems to work for me. But sometimes when I right click on this Tran 10U to bring up that window uh, and I edit values, it doesn't change in the simulation. So there's how you simulate a sinusoidal source in LT Spice and look at the input and output voltages uh, of an RC filter.